Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my After Effects video tutorial series. Today, you're going to learn about solids, adjustment, layers, and text animations, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so I'm in After Effects, and I'm going to go and import a video. So let's just go import and file, and here is the video, and I'm going to show you how to make the animation this video started off with. So I'm going to uncheck create, well, you know what, make composition, and click on open. And there I am looking off into the distance. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this? Well, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna talk about solids briefly because an adjustment layer is basically a solid. So I'm just gonna give you an intro. Basically, solids are gonna provide a way for you to animate backgrounds in your compositions. And you can go and make one just by coming down here and saying new and solid. And this pops up and you can see what we have here in regards to size. I'm gonna wanna make it the same as my composition size. So I'm gonna click that and you can see it is 1080p. And I'm going to use this color right here for it. Now oh, maybe make it a little bit lighter and click on okay and okay. All right, so there it is and it's over top of my video. And basically, I don't know if I said this, but solids provide a way for us to animate our backgrounds and our compositions. And you can apply different effects and masks to them and a whole lot more may also notice that the name of our solid is exactly the same as the color we have here. And if we come in here and we go Command or Control D and duplicate this solid down here, that up here in this solids folder, we still only have one. But if we create a new solid that has a different color than this, we will get a new solid inside of there. And let's say you want to come in here and actually change this solid. Well, what you can do is just go and select it and then come up here where we have layer and you can go solid settings and you can make some changes inside of there. You can change the color, you can change the size, all that different stuff. And if this is checked right here where it says affect all layers that use this solid, well then all the changes to one of them will be made to all of them. But I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna hit cancel right now. And I'm also gonna delete this extra solid. And whenever I talk about different effects that you can make to solids, I'm referring over here to effects and presets. So for example, if you would like to go and change this to a gradient, you could come in and type something like ramp and you'll see gradient ramp right here. You can just drag it over and drop it right on top of that. And then you'll be able to change the different gradients options over here, start color, end color, and so forth and so on. And any of these effects over here are going to work in regards to this. But I want to show you something that is really neat. And in that, you may notice right here where we have our solid, there is this guy right here, an adjustment layer. And what I want to do is I actually want to use a type of solid called an adjustment layer to go and make some really cool animations. So to create one, just like you do with solids, you're going to go new. And instead of solid, you're gonna go adjustment layer. And there we are. And you may notice right here in this little area right here that this little circle is inside of there. That means it's an adjustment layer. And what I wanna do with my adjustment layer is go and resize it. So I'm just going to drag it to something like that, about the size of my head. All right, and I got that on my head. And what I want to do with this is I actually want to deform it and perform transformations on it. And you can do that. You can just come over here to where we have distort inside of effects and presets. And you can come down here to the bottom where you have transform. And I'm going to drag that transform over onto the adjustment layer. And I'm going to first position this adjustment layer. So I'm just going to drag it off to the side of the screen, right like that. And now, so all of them start at the same point, I'm gonna drag my timeline to the zero position. Now I'm going to duplicate. Remember, Control or Command D. There we go. And I have a transform on all of these guys. And with this transform effect, I'm gonna increase the scale to 165% or 165. Then in this first one right here, I'm going to go to the one second mark right around there. And for this first adjustment layer, I'm going to come in here and go to the transform position here and specifically click on position. I'm going to drag my playhead to one second and then I am going to increase or bring in this 
adjustment layer until it just hits the edge of my video. So right about there. And then I'm gonna go to two seconds right here and I'm gonna bring it back off the screen just by dragging the position to the left down here to bottom. So it's gonna fly in and then it's gonna fly back off again. All right, so there it is, it's off the board. Now I'm gonna drag my playhead in here, increase my scale over here to 165. Okay, so there we go. And then if we animate this, well, hello, Internet. you're gonna see that it goes and does that inside of there. Let's say that I would also like to come in and rotate it, just to give it kind of a cool effect. I have no idea how much I wanna rotate it. So let's just rotate it just a little bit. There you go, something like that. And that ends up being 23. Well, and there you go. All right. And actually, you know what? I'm going to delete these adjustment layers and make a duplication of the other one. So delete that. And I'm also going to throw an effect on here before I go. Um, I'm going to try tritone. So tritone. There it is. Drag it down here to this adjustment layer. Drag it down here to this adjustment layer. There's the tritone effect. And there it is. And it's brown. I don't like brown like that. So let's try something like a pinkish color, so something like this, I don't know. Hey, that's fine. All right, so now I have the transform as well as the tritone effect on this adjustment layer. Now I can make duplicates and then not have to redo everything. So Control or Command D, Control and Command D. I'm then going to grab these individual layers and move them up a little bit. Let's try that one there and grab this one and move it right about there. Go and play this. Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five. Pretty neat. All right, so now let's make it neater. Let's go and add multiple different tritone colors. So here, and instead of this being purple, I am going to make it green. Good enough. See what that looks like. Now I got purple and green colors. And then for the last one here, let's go and make that like a bluish color. Um, or uh, let me see here. What do I want to do? There you go, like a bluish green. Or a yellow. Nah, I don't like that. Um, yeah, bluish green. Click OK. Go play it. Hello, Internet, and there we are. Five of my after Pretty cool. All right, so we got that all set. And we can also come in and terminate the end of these adjustment layers right here when they go off the screen. I'm just going to select all of them. Alt Option and the closing square brackets. If you want to know what I mean by closing square brackets, it is going to be this guy right there. See it? There's a closing square bracket. So Alt Option Closing Square Bracket. And you're going to be able to, just before I leave this, you're going to be able to add multiple different other effects that you can go ahead and play with on your own. So for example, let's say that you would want to do like a stylized. Let's get out of this altogether. You could come in and go to stylize. And you can play around with brush strokes. You can play along with all of these different things and numerous other different effects just to throw them on there just to see what they look like. All right. Just to give you an example, let's go and grab glow and throw that on this one right here just to see what it does. So again, we're back here and let's well, run it. Hello, Internet, and Woo. Okay. So pretty crazy. I'm probably not going to use that, but you might enjoy it. So go play around with it. Now what I want to do is come in here and drop in the Adobe After Effects text. So I'm going to come down here, click on my movie and go to the text. And I'm just going to come in and type in Adobe After Effects 2021. Oops, 2021. And that is a Cubano font that I really like. So I'm going to keep that. Go up here, get the art selection tool, drop it down here. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to add a drop shadow. Again, that's in effects. So let's go drop like that. And here is drop shadow. Drop it on top of that. And it's kind of hard to see. So, well, first let's increase our opacity. Let's take it up to 70. And then our distance, let's take that until right about there. So 10 looks good. And this is some text animation that you can go and automatically add without having to mess around with anything. So what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of this first and then I am going to go to animation presets and text right here and I want to animate this text onto the screen so let's look at animate in and you should come in here and play around with a lot of these because a lot of them are really cool 
but I am going to say drop in by character is what I'd like to use. So I'm just going to go drag it, drop it right there. And I'm going to go and get the animation right here and just drag it right about here. There it goes right there. That's where the animation's starting. And you're going to be able to see where these animations take place. You can see it takes quite some time to catch up to this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab the front of this and drag it right here, which is where I want the text to start appearing. Now, you can see it's going to go in there much quicker. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to go and have it drop in from the top of the screen. So I'm just going to select this guy and the distance is going to be changed up here in this effects control panel. So I'm going to come down inside of here where it says animator one and position and I am going to raise the text up here until it's just off the screen just by dragging and dropping it. And there you can see all the letters are falling from the top of the screen. So that looks pretty cool. And I didn't need to do anything. It did all the positioning and everything for me automatically. And let's look at where that ends. So it's 2021 right there. Let's say that I would want to go and add a bounce effect now just to make the text just a little bit cooler. Let's zoom in so you can actually see it. Well, I'm going to come in. I'm going to type in bounce. And let's look specifically for text expression, text bounce. And let's go and let's drag that again onto our, let's go and throw it down here on the timeline. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, so you can see it's wobbling a little bit. And you can come in here and play around with these different options that are available to you. Frequency is going to control the speed of the animation. So one's going to be slow, 10's going to be fast. Let's say I want to just increase it just a little tiny bit. So there you are, I'm just raising it just to raise it. Bounce per character delay is going to define how long it takes for characters to stop bouncing. And I am going to set that to, let's try like 0.6. And then let's play this. And you can see these other values are sort of changing as well as you mess around here. And normally I find that I'm mainly just going to be messing around with bounce per character delay. All right. And you can see there's a little bit of a wobble there, which I think is pretty good. And I think I'm just going to keep it right where it is. And there you go. And I'm going to go and grab this guy and drag it in here just a little bit so that my animation starts roughly right after it leaves that point. Okay, and you can see that it's sort of messing up a little bit. And that's just because it's rendering my video in the background. Now what I want to do is, let's say right around here is where all of the text is on the screen. Well, I want to animate out, so I'm going to go Alt or Option, and then the closing square bracket showed you what that looked like before. And there we go. At the six second mark is where I'm going to end that. And then, of course, you're going to be able to come in here and also go and animate out of different positions. But I'm really throwing a lot of effects on here, so this might not take. I'm going to go into Text, again, under Animation Presets, Animate Out, this guy right here. And I'm going to try fade out slow. And let's just drag it down here and drop it on there and see what happens. So here it goes. And it's a little bit of a wobble. And then it didn't quite take because of all, you know, the short period of time is on there. But you can go in there and mess around and try messing around with different things. I like fade in slow. Looks pretty cool. And that's under animate out once again. So go and give that a try. I want to show you another text animation you can perform. Right in this general vicinity, I want to go and throw some more text in. So let's just drag this. And this is going to be a multi-line text. And I'm going to show you a multi-line text animation. So I'm going to type text, solids, and adjustment layers like that. That's pretty good. Let's come down here, drag it down into position. Let's go and go to effects and presets, type in drop so we can add a drop shadow. Again, drop shadow right there. Let's go and increase our opacity to 75 again. So you can see right there, opacity 75. And for distance, I'm gonna make it 10 just for consistency. So it's the same as before. And there's tons of effects that we can add. 
I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to drag it up so that it doesn't appear until the other text is off the screen. Okay, so there it is. And to go and sort of blur out the previous text that's there, I'm going to have it bounce up and down as it comes onto the screen. So let's come over here. Let's get rid of drop. Let's go to animation presets. Let's go to text. And let's go to blurs. And there's a whole bunch of really cool ones here. There's bullet train, evaporate, foggy, jiggy, and transporter. I'm going to get bullet train, throw it on top of there. And then run it. And you can see what that looks like. And sometimes you might like an effect, sometimes you might not like an effect. Let's try blur by word. Again, bring it in here. And there's another cool animation. And I'm just going control or command Z to undo these. Let's try jiggy, drop that on top of there. And that's sort of like some fritzing out sort of crazy animation, it's kind of neat. And let's try transporter. And let's run it. And you can see it's sort of phasing in like a Star Trek type of effect, which is really kind of weird. But what I really like are specific multi-line types of animations. So this is a multi-line animation, so let's use one. First, I'm going to undo the effect that's on this. You can always see your effects just by coming in here and clicking on effects. And we got our effect off of there right now. So now what I want to do is I want to use one that I really like, which is called Jetstream. So let's grab that, drop that on top of there. And then this is really funky. So that text is going away. And then this is going to come in exactly as you saw in the intro video. Okay, so there is an overview of numerous different ways you can use adjustment layers, solids, and all kinds of text animations and effects. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.